the months after the big round. So, like you see, we fight in the tank and I saw it down and now to fight. So, in this situation, we don't think, we just act like machine. This is what uh, we told. And until we get to the tank, we saw, I think, maybe 10, maybe 15 uh, dead bodies, people that fall uh, beside us. And I think, okay, I saw the bodies, but this is the worst that, uh, that I'm going to see. And then we finish the, the battle after uh, almost seven hours to uh, find by, behind the tent. The exhaust arrived, arrived to us, team of eight soldiers. This is the only group that came to us. And we start to evacuate the wounded people. And after that, the, 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 all the civilians, I, I got uh, shovels in my pinky. Then we'll get uh, two of them in the end. And then we start to go out. And in the way out, it was the, the worst feeling of me in this day. Because that's it, I finished the battle. I'm sitting in the car and we're starting to go out. And then we saw that all the, the road full of dead bodies. And yeah, my instinct was to look at the, the people. I start to see people and gear without head, without head, without hand. And I realized that this is the people that I danced with them six hours before. And now that's it, they're dead. And probably they they finally not going to know what happened with them until a few days. And since this moment, and after that, I go inside the tank, I look in the soldier, the dead soldiers that was inside. I look at them all the time in his face and, and since the moment that we live I start to get my big trauma, I start to realize and process what, what did I see and we go out to the police station we start to realize that a lot of our friends missing and start to, to walk with the police, the army to find them and then we got evacuated to the hospital, it was over there one day and the day after we go back to our home, everyone was so nervous because they didn't realize what we went through and what's going on. And I start to see that I cannot sleep, I don't to sleep and I start to get nice and everything. And you know, the army, they, they teach us how to fight, how to be terrorists, but they didn't teach us how to fight with nightmares, and how to fight with demons that came to your sleep and that's it, you wake up and you feel that you are going to die and you have to get some knife or something to protect yourself. And then I start to go all over the streets and the streets was full with the soldiers, not the result, and, and each one of them, I look at them and I remember the dead soldier they saw in the tank and I start to imagine that the terrorists will come and kill the group of the soldiers and I'm going to need to take the, the weapon from them. And and then we start to work with the secret forces and we realize that no one knows what's going on, no one knows where our friend. And this day, October 7, I get born eight. I get a call to the resort. And because I was injured, they give me a few days to recover. And then I realized I was in the unit. I do resolve the unit that evacuates the bodies. It's called the Asada Home. This is the Zaka of the army. And I go back to two days. I tell to myself, okay, if the army cannot find them, I go and find two dead bodies. Maybe I can find them myself. And I go to two days and I realize this is not going to happen. And I get crazy and I have to take care of myself and go to do treatment. And, and then we start to see people, our friends, start to commit suicide because they cannot handle with this. And, and then we realized that we have to get some vacation, treatment, we start to get treatment. And then uh, friends of Daniel invited us to, to LA to relax for one week. And she said that there is a big uh, doctor over there that she can help us. So we go and we, she invited us to speak in some event. And we start to speak and we realize, I realize that when I share the story with other people, it's, it's, it's making it a little bit more good for me.
So we decided to bring two of our cousins that was with us also in the party. We brought them to LA and one of them has a lot of feel guilty about what happened. More than two people died in his hands and feel bad that he survived and so many people didn't. So in one of the day in LA, it was the day in LA, night in Israel, we have a group of 1,200 uh, people, no one survivor, and every day we check on the group what's going on, if there is a warning message, because most of the people don't go to the to treatment, they, they had enough from everything. So one of the day he saw a warning message, and he started sent the message to the guy, and said, are you okay? And the guy said, no, I'm not okay. Immediately he called him on FaceTime, and he saw him on the bedroom, tried to kill himself with a package of uh, Precocet, and he said, that's it, I cannot handle this anymore. Immediately we, we connect them to some doctor that we know of Israel, and we stay there. And since this moment, we realized that, like in October 7, that we didn't wait for anyone to save us and to save ourselves. We have to do it now, because the country is busy to protect ourselves and fight in the south, in the north, all over. 